Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 podcast. I'm your host Crimson Sin and we got another interview with Noel Stevenson about She-Ra season two and this was shared with me over on Twitter by Anime Hunter and just so you guys know you can send me tips, story ideas over on Twitter at C15 podcast. You can join our discord server link is in the description below and there is an email in the about page. So there's something out there you think I would uh, like or want to comment on or see if my thoughts and ideas on it. Go ahead and share with me. But um, this one is from CBR and they've run a lot of she stories. It's like, it's a little ridiculous. And CBR is a garbage tier website. I was going to do a video with recording the screen, but there's so many freaking pop-ups and it crashes so many times. So if you, if it sounds like there's a cut, it's because I had to reload the freaking webpage, but I'm going to just do screenshots. But uh, CBR.com, she Noah. She-Ra's Noel Stevenson on Bo's dads and Scorpia's love for Catra. And yeah, so that's what this uh, this whole story is going to be about. And the the just like the last interview that I did a video on, it seems like they didn't watch the same show. Or they, they drew weird conclusions from stuff that it's just weird. And I'll get to that as I go through it. It's a pretty short interview, but they say a lot of crazy stuff. And we begin. The first season of She-Ra and the Princess of Power introduced the world of uh, Etheria, the war between the Horde and the Resistance, and now season two is streaming on Netflix. Viewers get to further explore the characters, particularly their relationships with the, with each other, through battle planning. You, you mean this garbage right here? Oh, what? Tiny Bo, you will be avenged! <laughs> <laughs> they were playing games. That's not battle planning. Visiting a haunted village. What? It wasn't even... It was like set up that way for like a couple of cheap scares. But anyone with any type of, uh, I don't know, deduction could figure it out that it wasn't actually haunted. Why don't they just say visiting a spooky village? Okay, they could say it was scary or whatever. But haunted? Did they not watch the damn show? And e even meeting someone's parents for the first time. Yeah, yeah, you gave it up in the title of the freaking article, you freaking idiot. Uh, this, this is just so stupid. Uh, even meeting someone's parents for the first time, Shira once again has plenty of laughs and heartwarming moments. <laughs> you serious? No. Laughs. I probably laughed like two times, but out of like the 600 jokes that are in this, these, seven, these seven episodes, heartwarming moments, uh, are they counting all the stupid hugs? Those aren't heartwarming. Those, those are just stupid. CBR spoke with showrunner Noel Stevenson about the significant relationships it deduced and built upon in season two. So now we have to begin the actual uh, interview here, which I, I don't know. Were these... I would like to see this in video form, like where they actually sat down and talked with her. I'm pretty sure this was just a email online interview where they submitted the questions and then she just submitted them back. CBR. The final episode of the season featured, features Bo's dads and his struggle to tell his dad the truth of who he really is. It's a truly heartwarming episode. No, it's not. And... I'm curious to know your thoughts on their thought process in planning this episode as well as the placement at the end of the season. But the thought process was, remember how gay couples acted in the 90s, like in really bad sitcoms? We're going to do that. That's the thought process. Noel Stevenson. I definitely plan for Bo to have two dads. Oh, really, Noel? You, you planned him to have gay parents? Oh, what a shocker. The question became how we're going to reveal that. I felt that we had an opportunity with how mysterious Bo's past has been up to th that point to play on Adora and Glimmer's expectation of who he is and where he had come from and to show that his dads are so normal. Um, but they didn't really No, Did Glimmer and Adora ever bring up Bo's past ever? Like in any previous episode? Someone correct me. I, I've only seen each episode one time, but I don't remember a single instance where Glimmer or Dora said, Hey, Bo, where are you from? And, oh, I wonder what's up with Bo. Where did he come from? No one cared. They literally brought it up in this episode as they went to go look for him. So I don't know what the hell she's talking about. He might have two fathers, but in so many ways, they're sort of a mundane family. As Glimmer says, so nice and normal. 
Stop saying normal. <laughs> First of all, I don't really even like the word normal because what the hell's normal? But whatever. Uh, she continues on. And Adora and Glimmer both still have these conflicted feelings about where he came from and who he is. Again, what what the hell is she talking about? Is she referring to after the episode? They still have conflicted feelings? Well, the only conflicted feelings was Glimmer because Glimmer thinks she needs to know about everyone's personal business. Like, Bo had to tell her everything about... That's none of your business, Glimmer. If he wants to tell you, he'll tell you. But Adora and Glimmer still both have these conflicted feelings? What? We wanted to show that Bo's background is less angsty than some of the other characters. <laughs> it's funny, there really is no background except for Catra, Dora, and now I guess Bo has a tiny bit of background, but I guess Catra is the most angstiest thing in the world. But it shows that even then, feeling like you can't be who you truly are around your family, that still has an impact on you. Those feelings are still real and important to explore. As for placement... It's how it shook out. We wanted them to get plot points from the characters who knew a lot about First One's mythology. And so that's just how it came to be. That's just BS. That is such freaking BS. These weren't the only characters to know about First One's whatever mythology. You're telling me in all the Kingdom of Bright Moon, they don't have historians. They don't have people looking into this First One's tech and all that. But these two guys seem to be the foremost experts. And the queen hasn't called upon them for help? I, I don't get it. I know he doesn't like war or whatever, but you're going to deny your queen? No, you put at the end of the episode, uh, the end of the season, because you wanted to sneak in, here's my gay characters, at the end of the season, ha, it's over. It was stupid. It, it, that is such a BS answer. And to go back to uh, feeling like you can't be who are around your family, yeah, I guess that's like a message you could give, like in a, in a story for kids, I get that. But it, it didn't plan out that way. It wasn't. It wasn't even done in a even a semi-realistic way it had been so much better if one of his dads accepted him and one of his dads was still reserved and felt hurt about all the lying nope they instantly agree and they instantly fall back in love and they're instantly a super family it, i wish there had been a little bit more of that edginess i would never want one of his fathers to like hate him but come on give him a little guff for lying to you for all these years i'm assuming it's been years that he's been going to this fake academy but you know whatever since they're, they're gay dads, so they're going to be 100% understanding and 100% accepting because they're better than regular parents. Or, what is it, normal uh, CBR. This is an interesting mirror as far as parents because we have Bo's parents who are just so normal. You keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Normal and lovely. Well, they're kind of irritating and stupid, but... and. Then we have Shadow Weaver and her treatment of Catra and Adora where, <laughs> when they were growing up. Was that intentional? <laughs> of course, they make the, the homosexual couple, they're perfect. They're, 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 they're a little silly, they're goofy, but oh man, they're just so uh, likable and they're so lovable. And I can even really compare it to growing up in a basically a you know a war society it's, it's totally different you can't even really compare the two <sighs> no all answers i think there was a lot of exploration of authority figures and impact that they have us in the show i got a thing that i bet you noel stevenson in her whole life has had a problem with authority figures i have a problem with authority probably specifically family authority figures you gotta rebel you gotta be different people have brought up that oh noel played D and stuff and her character in the D&D game was based off of, she used because she could teleport and that's why Glimmer can do it. I remember reading in an article that she made her character like a, de a demonic type character to like get back at her uh, Christian mother. That's sick. I, I, I don't know. I never, I never hated my parents. My dad was kind of a jerk to me, but you know, whatever. Parents have ups and downs. I, I never went and was like, oh, I'm going to invent this evil, disgusting, dynamic character, you know, demonic character, and she's going to be a satanic thing, and now oh, that's really going to burn my, steam my mom's beans. Like, what? So she, she has a problem with authority figures. Most of her main characters are younger or at the very beginning of adulthood. Again, I've brought this up with the, uh, the ages of these characters and I get all kinds of answers especially in the comments people try to tell me that Catra and Adora are supposed to be like 18 <laughs> no effing way are these two characters 18 I would play them 16 at the most but they the way that they act and the, the way that they look I would say probably 14 but I don't know who they're referring to beginning adulthood 
You don't become an adult at 16. No, you don't. You, you make so many freaking mistakes. And they're all figuring out who they are and who they want to be apart from these people who shaped them as they were growing up. But we also get to see how it's not so easy. Well, yeah, okay, growing up is never easy. They want to be a... And who they want to be apart from those people who shaped them as they're going, I don't, what is this deal with hating your parents? Like, ah, that's a, that's a leftist thing. That's a Noel Stevenson kind of like the, her group, her ilk of people that you just hate your parents. You can't get away from them. I don't know. I, I love my, I love my parents. I don't know. I don't get it. You don't just get to cut ties with somebody who was an influential when you were younger. That's true. You were, how you were raised stays with you forever, whether you wanted it to or not. That's an odd thing to say. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I know people have done this before, said this before in the comments. A lot of these uh, shows that are run by people like Noel Stevenson, it's like a psychi- uh, it's a psychiatric therapy session for them. They get all their uh, feelings and their stuff, and they put it on paper. So whenever something someone does bad, that's something that happened in their life, and they're trying to work through it. And then, but we get to watch it, and we're not being paid. So even though our characters are striving for self individualization, are they? Are are they doing that? And to be independent and to choose their own path, again, are they doing that? This is not just something they got to ignore or forget about. It, and so is that something that we wanted to explore in a very thoughtful way? Thoughtful way? In a vague kind of way. I guess the only one who actually did any of those things you just said was Bo. And we didn't learn about it till the last episode, and they're never going to bring it up again. So I don't get this thoughtful way. What other characters is she talking about? Uh, Frosta? Uh, uh, but was there really, we didn't see any of that conflict with her growing, or I guess or our parents did. And she's like the, the queen. She's not really a princess, she's a queen. But they didn't show any of that struggle or that stress. They just, so I don't know what character she's referring to. CBR. Is there a connection between Shadow Weaver's mistreatment of Catra and Catra's inability to open up with two others, particularly with Scorpia? Well, duh. <laughs> what a stupid question. Uh, no, no. It, it would have been great if, if Steven says, no, that has nothing to do with it. And he's like, went deadpan. What a stupid question. Yeah, of course. Yes, the lady who was my mother and or torturer and or captor. Yeah, of course you can have an impact on her being able to trust people, you freaking idiot. For sure, uh, this is Stevenson, for sure. I think Katra, unfortunately, does still really care about Shadow Weaver's opinion of her. I don't even think, I know this is her, the, the creator, but I, it kind of seems to me, I don't think she really cares about her opinion. She just wants her to care about her. So, even if Shadow Weaver hated Katra, Katra wants Shadow Weaver to like like her. I don't think of her opinion ever. I guess it kind of gets all rolled into one, but you, you're making it too simple. I think that she's looking for validation and from a place that isn't the place she should be looking for validation from. She doesn't have any any uh, parental figures. Uh, Shadow Reaver's the only one. So, again, this is another thing. Oh, break away from your parents. They're terrible. Run to your friends. It, it's, just a, it's an ongoing theme. You see this a, a ton in these kinds of stories. And... I don't necessarily agree with it, but in Catra's sake, she doesn't have any other parents. She doesn't even really, she has her crew and Scorpio, that's just a weird relationship, but she really doesn't have anyone who honestly just cares about her without trying to get something out of her. And I guess maybe Adora might be the only person, but she done screwed that relationship up. For her, that's the only thing that matters to her right now. The validation? Eh, kinda. So even though she would never admit it, she does want to love. She does want love and acceptance, and she's not able to accept it from this point from Scorpio, who's offering it to her just with a totally open and sincere heart. Here's here's the thing. What what would Scorpio actually do? It just seems like this weird infatuation she has with Catra, and her Catra goes, "Okay, let's go out. We're we're girlfriends. What are we gonna do?" I, I don't think Scorpio would know what to do. I don't think she even knows what it would be like to be in a relationship. It's not all holding hands and kissing and hugging. There's there's gives and takes, and I just think they're never going to really explore that. It just seems like, oh, if someone thinks you're pretty and they're around you, oh, the, and they're for two girls, it's it's a great relationship. It's going to totally work. It, it's just it's disingenuous. Cratcher's not ready at this point to open herself up to that. I agree with that. Again, she gets very shaped. She's very shaped by her past with Shadow Weaver and Adora, and I think she has quite a bit of work 
to do before she's ready to accept love at all. I, I agree with that. I 100% agree that Katra needs to f- to figure out what's wrong with Katra. And what do you want out of life? Do you want to have this never-ending struggle to always be at war, to always be fighting, to always be in conflict? You can't live that way, but that's the way Katra wants to live. And it's going to end up killing her or destroying her or really jacking her up. You, you can't live this this war lifestyle, you know, especially since she's on technically the bad guys team. And then, oh, I'll go home and we'll be lovey-dovey with Scorpia. It's not going to work. She's She needs more than that. She needs to find something on the, on the inside. Uh, it kind of reminds me of um, Scott Pilgrim. You need to find self-worth. It doesn't matter if Scorpia loves you and gives you everything you want. If you don't love yourself, it, it doesn't mean anything. CBR, why is Scorpia so enamored with Catra? Because the writers are sickos. When Catra really hasn't given her that much in return. Now, that's another thing. People just love these... Uh, unrequainted loves like they don't have like oh if I just do enough for them they'll eventually love me that's that's just a bad way to be if someone wants to be with you they'll be with you and if they're constantly pushing away and it's just I don't know why Scorpio puts like she's the only other female that's available I guess I don't know uh, Stevenson I think that Scorpio is a very earnest and very sincere character I think she's honest uh, I guess I kind of agree with that. She her her emotions are on her sleeve. She lets everyone know exactly how she feels, and one of her qualities is that she's the proudest of. Okay, and the one of her qualities that she's the proudest of is that she's loyal. But loyalty to bad is not a good thing, and these really aren't your family, so there's really no reason to be loyal to the horde. Whatever. So just the fact that she's with the Horde at all, like we see her do bad things, fight the good guys, hurt them, but she's doing it out of loyalty. Uh, to what? I, I, I remember them kind of mentioning that uh, her kingdom was like the first to be integrated into the Horde and like because they were like rejected by the other princes. But I don't believe that. You're telling me Angela went and saw these Scorpion people to, ew, gross, get away from me. She really did that? I don't, I don't buy that. There's, there's got to be something more to it. It can't just be because they didn't like us. I mean, what? So now I'm going to join an army that's killing people and destroying the planet. Yeah, that'll show them. She's doing it because she wants to protect Katra. She's doing it because she wants to stop people from hurting her. Um, but th- there's no one there. There's, there's only two people who technically, uh, I guess, uh, three with Hordax. So Hordax, Shadow Weaver, and I guess Adora hurt her feelings. But what did you want Adora to do? Join the bad guy's side? She gave her an opportunity. Catra threw it down. So I don't necessarily buy that either. There's, there's things wrong with Catra. She's really falling for Catra. I don't think so. I think she's just enamored with her. There's a difference between actually loving someone and she's kind of in lust with Catra right now. I don't think she loves her. And this is, here's, here's the red uh, sirens warning. She thinks she can fix Catra. All right. Flush the bombers, get the subs in launch mode. We are at DEFCON 1. Dive, dive. Red alert. All hands stand to battle stations. No. No, no, no. That is a red flag if there ever was a red flag. You you get the hell out of a relationship if you think being with someone's going to quote unquote fix you, you can only fix you. Your relationships, your family, your friends, your uh, girlfriends, boyfriends, intimate partners, they can help you, but only you can fix you. And if you think you're getting into a relationship to fix the other person, you're only going to cause pain misery and it's gonna just break your heart you cannot fix anybody i i, I can't believe that she wants uh, maybe hopefully scorpia sees that and scorpia realizes wait a second i can be there for her support her but i can't you can't make the horse drink you can, you can show them the path bring them to the water but you can't force them to drink and fixing someone is doing that and it is very destructive and it will ruin relationships and you'll lose friends you'll lose everything trying to fix people it's just a bad way to be don't ever do that back to Noel. she thinks that if she can just give her give her love to Katra that it will transform Katra into someone who is capable of giving love back again not realistic that doesn't happen obviously there's a lot more with Katra Obviously, there's a lot more with where Catcher is right now in order for that to happen. But this is somebody that she really latched onto. And I think 
relatable to anyone who's ever had those types of feelings for someone else who didn't necessarily reciprocate. Again, this is something probably she did. Uh, she probably tried to fix somebody or someone tried to fix her. And guess what? It probably ended horribly. And like it always does. It, it never works. Catcher just isn't, she isn't quite the person Scorpio thinks she is. That's interesting that she said that because I know Scorpio, I she basically like, I have given you my undying love and I will never abandon you. What if Catcher goes behind her back and kills Lonnie and the lizard guy and that, are you still going to love her and stay behind her? Are you There's nothing she can do? Never say never. There's things Catcher could do that would make you turn your back on her. Don't, I just said there's a completely, truly undying loves. I, I don't, it's, it's stupid and it's done. It makes your character dumb. And I know Scorpio isn't the smartest person in the world, but she got to realize, again, I agree with this last statement. Uh, Catra isn't the person Scorpio thinks she is. She's not a good person. I wonder what Scorpio would have thought if she would have been in that uh, cave with her and Adora when she had that chance to turn around when Adora was fighting for her and Catra just said, F you, I'm going to go be a bad guy because you're the good guy. I wonder how that would have made Scorpio felt if she would have seen that. It was... As far as Scorpio knows, Adora just took Catra and threw, threw her out and said, I don't like you. I hate you. No, that's not what it was like. So I don't know, Scorpio. You, you, there's some things you need to go through. and some. Even though she seems like she's 30 years old, you need to do some growing up because you have a very childlike vi- vision of what it means to love someone and be with someone. Back to CBR. According with, uh, continuing with the Horde, we got more of Shadow Weaver's backstory with Glimmer's dad in the second season. Yeah, the Micah, that's Glimmer's dad. People had to remind me of that in the comments because I thought it was, but I didn't want to comment on it without actually knowing. But yes, that was him when he was a boy. Making her a more, more complex villain. Will we be getting the same treatment with Lord Hardak too? Or is he going to just remain the truly evil character? That's a good question. I like that question because are we going to get background for Hordak because he's going to be evil guy? Noel. We're definitely going to see more Hordak, even just from season one when he was just a distant, shadowy figure to season two. We're already starting to see a little bit of his weakness, of his insecurities, because at the end of the day, in season one, he just seems separated from everyone else. Um, his his weaknesses and insecurities? Uh, when he got mad, he couldn't get the portal to work? Um, when he was getting, like, I don't know, maintenance done to him? Insecurities? Go back. Someone show me where you thought, oh yeah, that's a Hordak insecurity. He gets angry and stuff, but that's just evil bad guy stuff. And yeah, he was like the guy who sat in a chair and did nothing in season one. <sighs> Get back to Noel. He also sort of sort of driven by his own hubris, by his own insecurities in some ways. Again, what the hell is she talking about? This She's projecting something in her life, a father figure, an older guy, someone that was mean to her, and she's projecting all these things onto the Hordak character. There's no other explanation because what the hell is she talking about? So it's not that we're diving into his character's backstory, aka we're not going to know anything about him, but there's definitely more to come from Hordak. Uh, Bad answer. That, That was the first actual really horrible answer because... All you did was talk about stupid crap and she asked about his background. She should have said, we're not going to d- discover his background, but we're going to know more about Hordak as a a person, as what his motivations are and everything, and not necessarily his past. Okay, that's that, that's how I took this answer, but she had to say it in the stupidest way. But uh, that ends this ridiculous article from CBR. And uh, yeah, they, they watch different shows. They, I don't know. There's no other explanation. They just... Especially Noel just brings up stuff that just isn't in the show. Uh, Adora and Glimmer's conflicted feelings about Bo's past. What? That that comes out of nowhere. Um, Hordak's insecurities? Huh? I, I, it's insecurity that he hasn't beaten the Rebellion yet? And again, can someone explain to me why they call the Rebellion? The, the, Hor- the Hordak doesn't own this planet. So what are they rebelling against? They would be, they'd be better if they just called themselves the Alliance. Or, you know, they're not, it's not, they're not like a bunch of refugees fighting against a powerful enemy. This is their planet. Hordak invaded them. So they're the defenders. So I I don't get why they're called the rebellion. I guess, I don't know, Star Wars. But uh, yeah, what a terrible article. And thanks for sharing it with me. But in all honesty, yes, uh, hit me up on Twitter with uh, story ideas. If you want me to react to a video or story, Uh, we've done it a couple of times and they're always cool. You guys always share the coolest stuff. Or share ideas and uh, thoughts about this article. What questions would you have asked? I mean, I said this last time. 
I, I would like follow up questions. I, you have to be uh, professional with the person you're interviewing and not push too hard, but you got to have to challenge them. You got to push them a little bit, but these just seem to be more fluff pieces, more, uh, she gets to say more of her crazy stuff that she just proves that she didn't watch her own damn show. But, uh, yeah, uh, we got these, no one's asked when season three is going to start or a, a window. Is it going to be this year? Is it going to be next year? Who knows? But uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. i uh, leave all the comics down below. I read it every single one of them and uh, until next time uh, there's some graphic novels coming out there is a book that's out now I probably gonna buy that Wednesday and just tear through it real quick and if it's worth talking about I'll do a video on it but till then thanks for watching guys I'll be sure to sub like share and hit that bell for notifications Crimson Saint here thanks for watching the video if you're enjoying the content be sure to sub like, share, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single upload. If you have any tips or story ideas, hit us up on Twitter at C15Podcast, or better yet, join our Discord server, link in the description below.